Welcome back to the channel. We are here once again with our HP NV TE01 2250XT, which for 2022 was the cheapest brand new HP I could buy in like a traditional desktop size. There's a playlist for this thing, which I will link right up there as well as down in the description so you can go get all caught up on all the happenings if you'd like. But the purpose of today's video is to do some initial performance benchmarking with it. If you have been waiting patiently for a new installment, I apologize it's taken this long. Just, you know, some things outside of my control. And we've upgraded equipment quite a bit, so hopefully these will be better videos than they would have been had I rushed them. Our first test is just going to be to see how long this thing takes to boot up from a dead power off condition. I find that people are interested in that. One thing I will say is the power switch on this thing is a little finicky for me to hit. It's like kind of recessed, so I don't always get it on the first try. So we will see what happens here. Go. And there it went. And there it goes. And we're actually going to take this into an open web browser. So basically when it becomes useful. Uh, all right. So whatever amount of time that was, that's actually pretty quick. Okay. Next up, we're going to run one that is just nice and simple. It's kind of a 3d demo is the Nvidia G sync pendulum demo. I will leave links to all of the benchmarks we're going to use down in the description. If you want to play along at home and they are all free outside of GTA five, we'll get to that later. But here you can see the pendulum demo is what it sounds like. It's just pendulum swinging back and forth. Uh, we had kind of a slow start there until things got rolling, but now we're not doing so bad. It's getting up about 20 frames a second. Let's zoom out on it. 22. Let's put some spin in. Let's turn the spin all the way up. 20. I'm not noticing any screen tearing or anything like that. It's running, you know, a little slow, but smooth. So not, oh, there's a little bit of screen tearing right there. It's finally coming through. But yeah, nothing too bad. All right, next up, we're going to go with user bench. Spoiler alert. I already tried to run this once and it did not go my way. This is a newer version of the software that I'm used to. I'm going to put it in full screen. And let it try again. One thing I didn't do last time was actually play this little mini game. So I'll do that this time. I don't know if that's what would have upset it or not. Nobody's claiming I'm good at it, mind you. Uh, open benchmark results. Same thing. What is the deal? Since I have a high background load on the CPU, this was after a fresh reboot. It says this thing's just performing terribly. What's interesting is sitting here using it, I wouldn't agree. It actually seems to be an okay performer. Okay, so apparently since it's an Optane drive, it just won't test it, which is weird because my understanding of how these Optane drives work is that they, the Optane features only pertain to hard disks that are in the system. I wonder if that's affecting our scores overall. Weird. Well, let's get out of it. Let's just check our background noise here on the CPU. Yeah, I'm not really seeing anything to complain about. Okay, well, I guess it's a good thing I decided to add PC Mark to our mix from the tests I would normally conduct. We'll see if it gives us a better result. This is just the free version. I will caution you if you go to the links in the description to download it yourself. But the only place I could easily find it was a super spammy website. Trustworthy but spammy is TechRadar. So just make sure you're downloading what you want to download. Click carefully. And obviously I haven't run it before, so I guess we'll just run. Okay. And I guess this test is supposed to take up to like 15 minutes. So I guess we'll find out together.
It looks like we have a valid score. It even says valid score. Let's look through and see what it had to say. Or I guess rather if there's anything meaningful I can take away from it. You know, not so much. That's kind of one of the things I like about user bench is that it gives you those, you know, good, better, best, bad kind of ratings. And here we just have a 5,000. But Overall, it's a place to start. Since I had plenty of time to just sit here and think about things while this was going, uh, I think the SSD may be what's messing with it, so that might be one of the first performance-oriented upgrades we attempt, just so we can see if UserBench becomes a valid tool for us again afterward. But anyway, yeah, there's our initial score. I'm just gonna call it 5,000. Next up, GTA 5. There's an included demo feature that I like to run. I find is pretty representative of how the game actually plays. Take a minute to look through our settings. I left this pretty much as it installed it. So I think the important one here is this one. So it should be running at the suggested limits, I believe. Yeah, so you can see it's dumbed down a whole lot of settings, but that's all right. So we're gonna go ahead and go into our benchmark. Alrighty, so overall I would say that was an extremely playable, if not overly pretty way to play some GTA. Uh, pretty much in line with my expectations. Also, past experiments have shown me that a really inexpensive video card makes a huge difference. So, even like a $100 video card would help the performance out there quite a lot. So, something to look forward to in the future, but out of the box, it would play it just fine, I think. If there is a particularly hot game coming into 2023 that people would like to see tested, leave it down in the comments. I'll see what I can do. I'm probably not going to test every single game that's submitted. In fact, I'll probably only test like one or two, maybe. Uh, just simply out of time constraints. My testing last year on a different series showed me that GTA 5 is the most demanding game that has any popularity going right now, or I would say the most popular demanding game. I guess that is to say, in my opinion, is a fairly accurate representation of a game a lot of people are playing and how it performs on cheap hardware. So moving on, the next one we're going to do is pretty much more for me than anybody else. This is the video rendering software that I use for the channel. This is uh, Vegas. Uh, this is actually Vegas Platinum, if you're curious. And this is the first episode of the series where I ordered this machine, sad to say, just about a year ago. But we're going to go ahead and get it rendering after it's done, you know, completing its pre-build and all that. And this one simply, how long does it take? All right, now we shall render. And off it goes. We'll see how long it takes. Alrighty, our test is complete. And it looks like we got it done in 14 minutes and 33 seconds, which is just slightly more time than the runtime of the video. That is a really impressive result, in my opinion, for the price class of this machine. With that said, this is a pretty basic video. There aren't really any effects or color correction or anything like that. 
a um, couple picture in picture things and just one video track, uh, one muted audio track and another audio track. Really uh, nothing too exciting going on, so nothing I'm that surprised about. One thing that did surprise me is the first two times I tried this render, it came up with the warning message you see right there, and it took an hour and four minutes each time. That warning looks like maybe it was related to a Windows setting or a codec error or something weird going on. Uh, as you can see, it was about midnight when this all kind of started going down. I'm like, okay, I've had enough of this. I'm walking away for the day. I ended up putting the computer in sleep mode, just more or less by accident. I just hit the power button on the front and walked away. I'd had enough. Came back a couple days later, and the first thing I did is just run the test again, and I got the result that you saw today. So it self-healed. It was not able to perform any Windows updates while it was asleep. I double-checked anyway and made sure. So I don't know what's up with that, but it fixed itself. Uh, a ghost in the machine, I guess. And there you have it. Other than a couple of kind of weird software gremlins, like whatever's going on with user bench and the rendering package, basic benchmarking is complete. I'm going to assume what we saw were basically just flukes, um, just this unique combination of hardware or whatever, and that as we go on in the upgrade path, we probably will either repeat the exact same ones or we'll figure out what the flukes are caused by and fix it at that point. That said, for this being a budget computer, uh, right now you can get one of these things for like 450, 500 bucks, right, right in that range with yet the next generation CPU and such in it now because the series has been on the back burner for so long. I'm pretty pleased with the performance. For the money, I don't know how much better you're going to get, but we will see how much better we can make it in future videos. As always, I appreciate you stopping in for this video. We will catch you on the next one.